Hello and welcome. In this video, I would like to introduce the changes in the Aquarius model. So what you see here now is the new interface of the Aquarius model, which has been greatly improved. Uh, you can see some of the news already in the navigation bar, where you now have the option to access uh, the specific areas uh, from the navigation bar that were not there before. For example, you have now a new option for the hub, and I will get to that a bit later on, which is the new integration environment that now includes all aspects of integration in Aquarius. You have the option to access the apps, which is the former integration. So we want to clearly now call this uh, consistently apps. The integration will be in the future all in Aquarius Hub, the generic integration, uh, as opposed to the apps, which are the um, specific solution for specific software as a service solutions. So in the apps, you will see the end-to-end -end solutions for specific uh, software as a service systems, which is essentially the same environment that um, we had before. The only new thing is the new Kariba connector. But if we go back to the modeler, we see here now the new start screen that explains the different concepts in the carries and also allows you to directly initiate particular actions, for example, creating new dimensions, creating new logic-driven dimensions, creating new link dimensions, and, and so on. Also, the option now to link directly to the knowledge base, downloads, um, and other assets that we have, for example, also the YouTube libraries. One uh, major new feature in Aquarius is now that you have the option to search. So, for example, if you want to search for a particular dimension, you can just type in the details and you'll get to that dimension. So a much quicker way to access now the items in Aquarius. And you see here now the uh, new interface for editing dimensions, which is uh, yeah, much easier to use and, and, and user friendly. So if you want to edit something just go here to edit mode and now you have all the options that you had before to edit uh, the items here and you can also see some of them are non-editable in this case this is a logic driven dimension that's based on a view that does the dynamic translation of um, account items so that's here now and you also have the validation so for example if you have a link dimension that you can only choose from that link dimension you can you can also then edit the linked columns directly from here and when you're happy with it just save it or uh, reset it back to the normal um, environment um, the other thing so there's now improvements in the uh, user interface uh, handling so with the aim to make this as uncluttered as possible so we see we have a lot of dimensions here but initially the system doesn't display all. If you want to have all of them, you can just switch to the uh, display of all dimensions or you can hide and just show the first few. Same with the cubes. An important change in the user interface is the location of the cube wizard. This is now available with this uh, wand icon in the cubes section. From here, you can now navigate directly to the cube wizard, which allows you to use the cube wizard functionality like uh, creating cubes in a very simple way from Excel and other sources. So you can do this now from, from here. This is temporary though. The cube wizard will be integrated um, in the foreseeable future with the Aquarius Hub that I will show you um, very soon. And this will become part of that. But for the moment, the cube wizard as was is available in this section. So this is the Actaris modeler. There's not too much change in functionality here apart from the search functionality. But as you can see, the UI is much more professional. So here we see now the Actaris hub. And that's now the single environment to manage all your dimension loads, your cube loads, and your connections. So for example, if we start with the connection, which is typically the starting point, I can add a new connection. And you also have the option to have the integrations or the apps that are also in the separate apps menu, just to have backward compatibility. In the future, everything will be here. So you can initiate the addition of an app also from here. 
but more importantly, you have now the option to add and build your data model from other sources as well. The key new features are uh, Excel, text files, SharePoint and OneDrive. So for example, if we look at SharePoint, you just put in the SharePoint details. So host name, the name for this connection, the details of the path to the SharePoint item that you want to use, you have the option to validate this. And with that, you can now import and manage data from, from SharePoint and similar with, with OneDrive and similar with Excel and text. And so that's typically the first step. You set up the connection that just configures the connection that you want to use. The next step is then to build dimensions. And with these connections, you have then the option to build dimensions. And in the end, so these are linked, what we used to call insta-link dimension or link dimension. So these dimensions would be dynamically updated from a source. So you can, for example, enter the name for the dimension, then choose from your available sources. So the, the local data source is always your local database. So for example, if you have tables from the apps that are generated, so what's typically referred to as staging tables, so the information as it comes from the source system, you can directly access that from the local data source and build your own dimension as you need them or you can use any of the other connections that you saw before. And so, for example, if I choose here now a table, so let's say dim account, I will see the definition of this table and I need then to specify two parameters. So which of your column has the unique ID and that still needs to be an in integer ID and which of the columns has the unique name. So these are the concepts in Actaris uh, that are required for dimension load. So you just specify them and you can drag and drop them. So if you want to change them or initially specify them, you can just drag and drag and drop them. You can see here now it also gives you automatically the type of the source. In the coming version, we already have the backend functionality, but it's not yet in the front and you will be able also to set then the column types. So for example, is this an integer, is this a string, is this a date, is this a boolean and, and so on. And so this would then create the dimension load. And this dimension load can then be executed in jobs. So you can then specify I want to create a job, I want to create a few dimensions, I want to uh, load data from a cube. And that is then part of the jobs that you saw before. So if you go back to the cube manager, so this uh, to the main screen, I can see then all the jobs there in the scheduler. So for example, here I have a job. I can see also what was the status of this job. So you'll immediately see if something, an error occurred, also with details. You can even click on them and see then more details of this particular job of the last execution. So then the, the job is typically executed by a scheduler. So this is where you then can automate that this job that, for example, includes three dimensions and loading the cube from a particular source system, for example, SharePoint, should be executed at a particular time. So you can uh, create a, a schedule and say, OK, I want to uh, run this at 12 a.m. And it's this particular job that I want to run that includes the different job uh, parts, so for example, the dimension loads, the cube loads, and, and so on. The cube, the cube loads work in the same fashion. So you specify the name of this, this load, you specify what cube you want to populate, then you specify what's the source, so any of the connections that you have, for example, I don't know, a dynamic system or a SharePoint file or data warehouse and whatever connection you want to use and then what specific table um, you want there as well. And then you just specify how do you map the dimensions to the columns in your connection source. So this concludes a short overview of the new features in the Acarius Modeler. 
for any additional questions, please contact our support team.